Hello, welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. I am up in northern Maine where I'm thoroughly enjoying the crisp cold weather that brings um, fall to this hemisphere. I couldn't be happier. I'm wearing sweaters. We've had fires. I've made chicken stew. So I've got fall full on. It's pretty gorgeous. Um, here if you have the chance to come to Maine in the fall, I would highly recommend it over the summer any day of the week any month <laughs> any season of the year um, so leaves are changing and um, Yeah, and settling into routine. I'm a fall winter gal. I'm not a, a spring forth summer energy I like to come in and get quiet and hibernate um, definitely bear medicine that's my messenger who shows up a lot. <laughs> if I had to pick an animal I feel like I most identify with, it would probably be a bear. I'm a bit of a lumberer and I like to be quiet and if you don't poke the bear then I'm generally pretty docile. Um, and I like to eat anything and everything and uh, and I'm an easy keeper. So what I eat I can convert quickly to fat energy. So good job Sarah. Anyway, <laughs> um, that being said, uh, you are most welcome here, and I'm so glad you've de decided to join me for a wee while um, of knitting chat, fiber chat, wool chat, and um, on this edition, I'm going to be talking about um, what I've been working on, some finished items I have, and some plans for the future. Uh, if you had a chance, I did post a Fiber Trek Wool Scout adventure um, on the YouTube channel of my trip to Orkney. It's primarily focused on um, kind of a montage of the work and the landscape, but at the end I do talk a little bit about the Highlander Fleece on site from the garden. So you can check that out, and I'll be also putting one together about the Wool Scout retreat uh, from this past August, and I'll talk a little bit about events. I kind of hit like a knitting crisis at my parents. I was down there longer than I had had anticipated being down there. And so I got to certain points with projects. Either A, I finished it, or B, I couldn't move forward because I didn't have the needles I um, needed. or And I didn't bring my notions bag. I don't know. What was that? Um, so I thought I would be coming home, obviously. And so I got to this point in all my projects where I was like, and I had like five days before I was coming home. So I had a little bit of a panic. Um, I made it through. I had considered going out and buying more needles, but I tempered that. And um, yeah, so phew, right? Now I know I can do it. I didn't enjoy it, but I can do it. Um, so I finished... Um, oh, here it is. This is the Into the Waves Cowl by uh, Maria Muscarella, um, also known as Ninja Chickens. She has a podcast and um, she's a botanical print maker as well as a knitwear designer. So <clears throat> I knit this out of Mindful Folk, which is a thin mohair blend. Mindful Folk Farm is in New Gloucester and Hannah Welling is a photographer for Taproot Magazine and she has um, done lots of other projects, but I picked up her yarn at the Taproot Market in this past December. You can see it's a nice long cowl. Um, into the waves, the yarn, and it's kind of a slip stitch. So I've been working on this since uh, EYF. I took it on the airplane. I ripped it out. I thought that this slip stitch experience would be much easier than it was for me. Um, I ripped out a lot of stuff on this, which was kind of ridiculous, but I think I would just get distracted and, um, and it's kind of a visuospatial kind of skill set to keep track of what is the outcome going to be, like where should your yarn be crossing. Um, but uh, it's a nice double thick cowl and nice and long, it's ready for winter weather and I'm happy to add it to my arsenal of uh, winter clothing. It's very different than anything I have. It's you know not lace and it's not cable and it's not color work. So I like that. I like that bit of texture. It's something that it's, it's different. And I like the way these two colors work together. So thank you, Maria, for a wonderful pattern. Um, 
I think I told you, I can't remember if I've showed it, but I did finish Drema a long time ago and I got it back because it went to uh, Clementine and I got it back and Puffin, which I finished and talked about last time, um, has gone on to Clementine. So if you want to see it in person, you can visit Clementine in Rockland, which is a fabric shop as well as um, the flagship store for uh, Starcroft Yarns um, in Nash Island, as well as some of the other stories Starcroft is choosing to tell under the Woolwife label. So I knit this in the Muckle Marl, which is Drema by uh, Jennifer Steingass. This was for the Icelandic month uh, for Tolt uh, Woolen Yarn. This pattern was designed for that. And I did the color work in Nash Island Light. Uh, light meaning lighthouse, not light meaning volume or weight. Um, so I've been sleeping in this sweater. I live in this sweater. I did make a few modifications, uh, spit out that syllable, Sarah. Uh, I finished the cuffs in just a garter. I really like this. Um, this I used on baby cables and big ones too. Um, I also did the bottom band in garter. I like that um, structure, the way it sits better than, uh, than rib. Um, and I'm not sure if it's finished with a rib, but I finished it with a roll collar and it's a, it's a nice wide neck. So, um, so anyway, that's that. I know I've talked a little bit about it, but here it is in person and I'm getting to wear it. So I also reached a point <clears throat> since I've last talked to you where I finished the body of the Oa. So the body's all finished. I think I knit to just about 16 inches and it's a raglan shaping um, up the sleeve. And I'm knitting this um, out of Olcentrum, which is a three-ply yarn out of Sweden. Um, if you're interested, this I love this yarn a lot. I love that it's a three-ply. It I think it's like a light worsted, um, and I'm using it kind of as a DK. Um, I, I love this yarn. It's, it's doing gorgeous color work. I love a three-ply, you know that. Um, it's got a little bit of lanolin left in it uh, from the processing, and um, it's, I think it's on the stronger wool side. So, um, so anyway, if you're looking for Ulcentrum, I know the Woolly Thistle is carrying this now, um, and it's a real nice workhorse yarn. <clears throat> so, I have uh, a few reservations about my next few steps with the Oa, and um, that involves the sleeves. I'm really glad, I think the fact that Kate recommends that you knit the body first is a really helpful tip uh, because you do get to really memorize this stitch pattern, um, the overall stitch pattern, so that when you're increasing for the sleeve, um, you just, you have more familiarity with it. And so I need to cast on for the sleeves. I'm thinking of going up a needle size um, to maybe create just a little bit more ease. I'm worried about the size of the sleeves on my arms. Uh, I, knit, I think I'm knitting a 42 bust, um, but I want it to be comfortable. So like if you know, you're know you in a canoe and you've got a flannel on underneath, you still have ease around um, what you're doing. So this piece, I really want it to function as a true outerwear. I mean, it's double thickness, three ply yarn, um, so um, so I'm trying to figure out my sleeve proportions. And it's not like, I don't think, based on the research I've done from other projects, I can't just do the next size up sleeve because of the way the stitch um, pattern lines up and the raglan shaping. So anyway, I've got a little bit of thinking to do about that. And I'm kind of knitting this a little bit in parts. Um, so I've put it down. I'm gonna cast on the sleeves next weekend, I think, and we'll have a bit of time and have those kind of just setting in the wings, um, ready to go. Um, so that's the Oa by Kate Davies. Um, I'm knitting that, I think the color is charcoal uh, and medium gray, and I don't know the color of the red. It's a real cherry red though. It's a real traditional bright red. Um, so that's the Oa. I brought out, because I've been just really hankering for some cable work and for a, for a while, and I've been doing a lot of color work, color work yokes, all over color work, 
um, I did that cowl. <clears throat> so I've had this on the needles for a little while. This is the Girl and the Sea Shawl by Dandelion Girl Designs. And I'm going to show you what it finished will look like. And let's see if there's extra pictures. So here it is from the front. Um, so you knit top down and then this cable is picked up and it's applied. So I am finished the top part and I'm currently working on the cable. I'm knitting this out of Doc Mason's wool, which is from Ellen Mason or Odysseer on um, Instagram. It's a Cheviot Clune Forest and Maritime Wool Mix. This is milled in Prince Edward Island at McCloslands. The color is natural, it's four ounces, 210 yards. So it's a really round, plush, dense yarn. And it's gray. <laughs> and here is the cable. So the cable is just scrunchy, you know, it's like, I love it. Um, so it's got a lot of good definition, flight, whoops. And so you've got this kind of rope cable, this honeycomb, and then a rope cable, and then I think this is the side that I'm applying it to. So I like it. I mean, the construction is really interesting, and it's kind of, you know, shifts it up a little bit, and I like working the cable charts. I don't actually need to look at the chart for this. It's really intuitive, and you can read your work very easily. And the stitch count is so great. It's like, this is 52 stitches, and then you, you know, you turn around. So, anyway, there's the cable. So, I'm going to have to finish this. It goes all the way around the body, and then I pick up and I do the collar band, and then pick up and do the bottom band. So, I'm knitting this on a 5.5 millimeter, which I think is like a US 70, I don't know. And, yeah. This has a really substantial feel. I had forgot to mention, um, but Pauline of Lifelong Yarns in uh, Scotland, who raises um, Scottish blackface, she talks about uh, yarns as being stable, and I really liked that word. Um, you know, stable versus drape. It just has a presence, it has a heft to it. It's a stable yarn, it's not gonna, um, Kind of disintegrate away um, or you know maybe pill like this definitely is a, this feels stable like there's a got a nice high twist on it so anyway I kind of like that word um, to kind of you know describe um, you know what something is gonna how it's gonna perform so so anyway this is my new obsession cables um, I've done one full cable sweater, I, which I gave away, and I, that was from the book A Fine Fleece, uh, and it was pieced, and I seen so, it. So anyway, everything. I'm feeling cables, although I'm I'm still really enjoying color work yokes. So, but we'll see. Ugh. And this isn't. There's a. I don't. I bought this at Mother of Pearl Yarn Shop. I think I showed it before, but I thought I took this out in the boat the other day. Um, it's just a little otter. And I think this is um, a main company, a mother and son, but I don't have any information on it. So, I also cast on, because I have a lot of gray going. I've got, you know, that sweater in gray, and I just wanted something a little lively. So I cast on Perrin's Bridge by... Uh, Meredith, Lee Meredith, and this was from a Jill Draper collection, and I'm using Jill Draper yarn. I got it at Rhinebeck three years ago, two years ago. Let me see. And it's this really interesting geometric kind of shawl. And I'm using 
her Valkyl, which is um, Chidiot Wool, and I'm using her Rockwool Brownstone as the colorway, which is a Cormo Merino crossbred wool. So I think the Chidiot is a singles, <clears throat> um, and it's Chlorella is the uh, uh, colorway. So Chlorella is the green, and Brownstone is the brown. How helpful is that? And um, 225 yards on the Valco per four ounces and 280 yards per four ounces on the brownstone. So um, anyway, I picked that up at the studio um, when I went to Rhinebeck and I thought it was about time I put it on the needles. Again, this is kind of another design that you, I just don't see and it's a really interesting construction. I first started it, I was like, this is not right. And I was like gonna rip it out and I just, you know, was not happy with the result. But the more I knitted it, the more it became apparent I was doing it correctly. So you can see the chlorella. This is the singles cheviot, which is kind of a plump, you know, the singles versus the two ply. You see those two different yarns. Um, so the way they perform together, um, the way they're held, uh, makes that line really pop, that um, cheviot. So <clears throat> that's what I'm doing. And I'm really enjoying it. I do need to look at the chart quite a bit. To, um, and that might be kind of out of a little bit of out of laziness uh, for just not really uh, tuning in to what I'm doing. I'm just, I mean, I am like referencing the chart each time. Um, so I have only knit that much, so perhaps I'll, I'll grow more accustomed to it. But, um, so yeah, so I'm super happy to get this on the needles. I haven't, I have some other Jill Draper in my stash, which I got a couple years ago as a, a Christmas, a birthday present from my mom. Uh, but this, I really love those two colors together and I'm in, they're very earthy, like woodsy. And this is in a matter root bag, of course. And what I love about this one is the flannel lining. So thank you, Christina. Thank you for producing such beautiful artwork on amazing bags so I can collect them. <laughs> so that's going on. And the last thing I put on the needles, I ripped out because I broke, they were on Knitter's Pride Cubics, I think, and I broke one of them. And I bought these flexi flips and I wanted to try them. So I cast on the underwing mitts. And these are by Erica Huser. And I'm knitting them out of Pace and Presence by um, Wildly. And I might not be showing them to you, but that's okay. So anyway, I don't know how I feel about these flexi flips. I don't know if I'm not setting them up correctly. I don't, I find um, double points easier. Uh, I'm hoping I can get a little education on them from somebody who knows how to use them. But I do find that they're more awkward for me um, than holding four needles. Or, you know, so I don't know if I've got it set up wrong, if I'm not really understanding the geometry of how the, um, how the needles work together. So anyway, so I put that on. I love this Pace and Presence um, yarn. It's, uh, oh, no tag, rats. Um... Her colors are really gorgeous, and I have a sweater's worth of this too, but I'm knitting it in these two, um, like just, which is basically what Erica designed it in, which is like a deep navy and a light gray. This is also in a matter root bag. This is her mini bag, the chickadee. It's the main state bird, so it's kind of apropos. So that's kind of it for the knits that I have on the table. Trying to think if there's anything else. Yeah, so that's what's going on in my world. Um, I have planned for Edinburgh Yarn Festival because uh, I will be returning this year. I bought my tickets. 
I will be going with Corinne from the Woolly Thistle, uh, Jenny Estelle from Starcroft, and her daughter Leah from Clementine in Rockland. And I'm thinking I'm going to knit a sweater for the festival. And I'm thinking I'm going to be doing, I'm going to buy this kit and knit this sweater from Alice Starmore, which is Lapwing. Now, this is a seamed construction. And there's two options for me. One is to just seam it. I'm not a fan of seaming. I never really get the results that I want. And so I end up kind of being just disappointed with the way that these lines sit and the way the fabric isn't, it just doesn't always match or it's not neat enough or whatever. So I'm a bit of a whiner about that. So I also thought about accessing Elizabeth Dougherty's um, knitting from the top down and um, looking at her shaping and because she's, she's made some gorgeously beautiful and beautifully designed sweaters that look very sharp and very smart with um, you know picking up and using short rows to do the sleeve cap. I've done that once before with Bonnie Sennett's her good no um, cardigan and I love the results so I might try to uh, work that out so uh, rework the pattern so I can do a knitted in sleeve cap. So that's on the docket. The other pattern I found, this is totally color work, but I really loved it. Um, I loved it because I feel like the shape, I, li I like this, the graphic size of the yoke, but it doesn't compromise on the shape of the, the sweater. Um, this is Wild Grass by Asa Janzek. I love that big turtleneck collar. So I like the bold graphic at the top, but I especially appreciate the fact that when I've looked at the design and other people wearing it, um, it looks like um, the sleeves uh, where it's joined uh, will sit like a sweater instead of, instead of more like a poncho. So I don't like the idea of lifting up and having my whole sweater go with it. It feels kind of restrictive, especially with um, you know the things that I do and where, where I'm wearing sweaters. No, um, so, and this is like, I feel like, so you can see how in this, you know, the join is um, in a space that fits more like a, tradi a traditional sweater versus um, a swancho. So anyway, so I, I kind of love that. I'm thinking about what I could make that out of in my stash. So I just wanted to bring your attention to that because I really, it, it just really struck me. And I don't know if there's anything else on my my docket. I mean, I dream about all the sweaters. I'm such a sweater knitter. Um, I have a shawl planned. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that, but I'm kind of scheming and plotting with my friend Nicole of the Gentle Knitter Podcast. And we're thinking we're going to do a knit along for it. And it's going to feature the Bybrook Farm Yarn and Nash and... Um, I'm looking forward to that one. So I'm dying to cast that on, but I'm going to wait for the knit along and I'll have more information for you about that um, in the next uh, episode. A couple things I picked up I wanted to tell you about, which I'm sure you've all seen already. Um, speaking of really cool patterns to knit, I did pick up the winter edition I don't know, Pom Pom Cordial, is it winter or fall? Maybe it's the, it's fall, because I picked it up in the fall. The fall edition of Pom Pom. So I really fell in love with this, ex, um, I'm not gonna say it right, ex Shield um, sweater. I love the whole concept of the theme for this magazine, this particular one, really resonated with me and some of my, um, you know, personal uh, thoughts and, you know, reflections that I have in my own life. So. Um, so I definitely think I'm going to do this. I'm thinking about doing it, I know this is crazy, in um, cashmere people yarn from Port Fiber. I love the idea of those colors. They're really rich, um, the colorways. And I, lo well, I love the idea and story behind the cashmere people. And I love um, Casey and her work, their collaborative work together. And it's, you know... Um, it, it would be a really luxurious sweater. 
So, um, yeah, so I, I definitely would like to put that on the needles at some point. So if you haven't already taken a look, I would recommend um, picking this up. There's quite a few um, patterns in here which I find innovative and inspiring. And yeah, so I really enjoyed this particular issue of Pom Pom. There were a few questions last time about some of the stitching I have been doing and I, I feel like I maybe have shown these before but I it wasn't in correlation to when I had pointed out the technique last time I didn't use the book to point that out so um, simply stitched with applique by um, uh, Yumiko Higuchi uh, is a really beautiful book and I got a lot of inspiration for my hand stitching from it um, I mean, this would look really beautiful on, on a yoke or on the back of a dress, uh, on a bag. So she has some really gorgeous ideas and patterns. This is Simply Stitched Beautiful Embroidery Motifs um, and Projects with Wool and Cotton. So again, just really stunning design to inspire you, um, especially if you're making clothing and you're interested in pursuing um, embellishment. So I picked those up and I just picked up her new one, which is at my mother's um, and it's uh, embroidery through the year, I think. And it's just 12 seasonal uh, motifs. And I love that one. So I don't know what happened if, there. It happened last time, but if you're interested in embellishing your knits, then I would recommend her work for sure. So I think I'm getting ready to wrap up as I look around for whatever maybe I've missed. And yeah, so I have the Highlands on the Fly retreat coming up at the end of the month, and looking forward to that. I'll be welcoming um, Casey of Port Fiber to do a talk about her work uh, overseas and with the Kashmir people. The vendor market is going to feature Port Fiber, Matterroot, One Lupin. Um, I'll be there with Starcroft Yarns and um, Rich Pond Herbals, my friend Carrie Balbo, and... Um, homespun gals which is Rhonda Craven who is out of uh, kind of down east Maine and they raise uh, sheep on the islands in that area so I'm looking that's a really nice array of uh, Maine uh, gals coming up to represent and um, we'll be offering some workshops on um, twined knitting like a lecture demo series Heather of uh, Highland Handmaids will be doing silk um, scarf dyeing. I'm looking at a stitching workshop, and um, Carrie's going to be doing a talk about skin um, herbs for skin. So yeah, so there's some fun stuff happening, and there's still space available if you're on the fence about that. And it's going to hopefully be gorgeous. It has snowed in the past, um, and that's held at the New England Outdoor Center. So I'm looking forward to a little bit of time. It's a bigger retreat than most of the retreats that I do. Um, so, and Wool Scouts, look out for the Wool Scouts, uh, kind of wrap up. That is, I just need to sort out some details with Karen and Igor, and that will be, uh, opening up again for next year. And, um, so stay tuned for that. You follow my Instagram feed, uh, for more information, usually like the minute that that opens for, um, general registration. So the only um, other event that I wanted to mention is... Get my notes here, I think. The only other event that I wanted to mention um, is that um, why it is uh, Vermont Grandview Farm. Um, they, ra they raise Gotlands, and I um, I met Kim a couple years ago when I purchased um, some of her yarn to make the color affection shawl out of um, the three shades of beautiful Gotland yarn she had. Well, she reached out to me to let me know that she's arranging a um, retreat to Gotland this year. It's going to be June 2nd to the 10th, uh, 2019, eight days, seven nights. And 
Um, it really is going to appeal to shepherds and shepherdesses, uh, fiber artists, originating out of Boston and all flying together. So this is a combined thing. Airfare, housing, transport, meals, and programming are all included in your price. Um, there's going to be a spinnery visit. It's going to be a full farm cultural immersion. So you'll be staying on a sheep farm, visiting other sheep farms, connecting with work. Um, if you're interested in looking at this, I will. Um, you, you would like. You really need to reach out to Kim um, and put in the email subject Gotland tour. So I will put a link to her um, right in the. Uh, oh gosh, in the down bar. Is that what that's called? Should be coming across right here. Um, and if you're interested in going to Gotland, then you can talk to Kim yeah, about that. There are other plans working their way. I'm moving forward with Orkney, uh, Orkney Wool, and um, yeah, so I have lots of really interesting stuff to be grateful for and looking forward to, and I, I really appreciate uh, all of you who get behind these projects and um, allow me to do this work and interpret what's happening around here in Maine, Fiber World, and invest in that, and yeah, so I'm really grateful for that. I'm grateful for your input and feedback, insight, and, um, you know, comments, etc. So thank you so much. But that being said, wherever your fiber trucks may take you, may you return home safe and with lots of soulful stash. In the meantime, take care, and I'll see you soon. Bye.